uh, track one. So we have three more sessions in, or three more talks in this session, and we're going to start out with uh, extending roar, wag the lion. Um, and, the, and our speakers for this talk are Carolyn Grant, Arthur Smith, and Quinn Hart. So take it away. Thanks. Uh, we're going to talk about extending roar. Um, roar, uh, I guess, Quinn, go ahead and, and move to the outline. Um, we're going to talk about why we're going to extend roar or why we would like to see roar extended, what purpose uh, we would like to, what additional functionality we would like to see added. We're going to go through an extension schema, a couple of extension demos, uh, and considerations of a few different paths that we're going to take. Um, different storage or implementation possibilities and, and how to resolve those pits. So we've got a few polls we're going to scatter throughout. Um, we're ultimately looking for feedback. We don't have a, a definite path forward, and, and we're looking for some input on that. Uh, go ahead and advance, Quinn. Why extend ROAR? ROAR is this wonderful way to identify unique institutions. Um, but there are things that are missing from it. There, are, there is data in grid that is not yet there. It's coming, but there's relationship information that, that's key to a lot of organizations that isn't there yet. Um, and we would like to uh, explore the, the, the ways in which the top level ideology of ROAR um, could be improved. Um, go ahead and advance to our reasoning, our case for extensions. Oh, I'm one slide ahead of you, there we go. Um, why, here are some of the reasons we, we would like to see it. Uh, a lot of places have departments that wanna be able to say, here's our research output. And that is not currently um, intended with, with how ROAR is implemented. Um, a lot of places have their own internal identity identifiers that are at a smaller granularity than the top level ROARs. And if they want to be able to join it, merge it with or, or match it to a, a global identifier, they're going to need um, more granularity. Uh, if you want to be able to search across different organizations for similar keyword and similar um, departments, similar affiliated organizations like hospitals, uh, it would not be nice to be able to do that. Um, and and, and there's institution to institution and relationships that are um, important that are not able to be leveraged on in, in ROAR as it, in its current implementation. Um, so again, expanding ROAR to, to the concept of related institutions and especially parent-child institutions, uh, I think would give it a lot more usability for a lot more people. Um, next slide, Quinn. This is a slide actually for my presentation last year. All the blue units have their own ROAR. And as you can see, they're not all on one level. The University of California has all these children. The UC University of California Davis has children who have children. And a lot of them already have their own identifiers. It would be nice to be able to understand the relationships. If you're looking at a, at a hospital, or you're looking at an institution, what are the different divisions and, and departments in it. Um, the bottom half shows my particular uh, organization's example. I'm part of the Center for Astrophysics and we have two parents. We are part of Harvard and we are part of Smithsonian. So that information is lost um, in the current implementation of ROAR. Smithsonian has all these other children. Harvard has all these other children, some of which have their own identifiers. And so being able to um, to be able to explore that and, and navigate that, we think, uh, would add a, a lot of use of use um, for ROARs. I'm going to turn it over to Quinn, who's going to talk about uh, data schema. All right. Um, thanks, Carolyn. Uh, so as, after uh, we've talked about some of the reasons that um, we might want to extend ROAR and have a role in the administration of that extension as well. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the requirements of that might be and then go into um, a couple of examples um, as well. And so basically in order to kind of uh, determine the or to satisfy the things that we're looking 
at, at being able to describe these sub-organizations within a rural community. Um, we know that we want to identify some relationships that exist and some um, individual uh, attributes about these individual organizations as well. So um, the idea here is if you look in the upper left-hand uh, corner of this, you have the ROAR for UC Davis. And then um, UC Davis itself would like to have sort of a role in the administration of the, def the definitions of their colleges and their departments. And so in order to do that, we need to, as Carolyn mentioned, be able to define the hierarchical arrangementship to identify the parents and the child um, of these individual organizations. Um, at the same time, in order for us to kind of compare the different, whoop, I'm not sure why I went away there, but I will continue talking. Um, at the same time as uh, the, we want to be able to look at the different types of research organizations to define whether we're talking about a college or if we're talking about a particular department, for example. And then finally, we actually want, in order for us to be able to, to understand across uh, different research institutions, that these sub-organizations are actually using or, or studying the same field, we want to actually define some of the subject areas as well. So um, all of these different parts are different predicates or different uh, descriptions and of the subject, the type, and the parentage. And for some of these things, like when we want the official name, those are gonna obviously be um, sort of literal terms. But for these other components, so that we can do queries across the organization, we're gonna wanna be able to be talking about the same type of entity. And we're all speaking the same language when we talk about different research types or organizations. So this looks very much like um, a linked data format. And so we're gonna um, look at some example implementations um, with two different ideas, but with this linked data format as the back end. Um, and so the first um, is a demonstration of how this might be maintained locally. And um, I have a colleague that should be putting in the chat um, a pointer to this demonstration because we're trying to demonstrate this with a little Google sheet um, that you can actually take and and copy and follow along with this. And for this one, we've taken as inspiration um, the Vivo um, ontology. So Vivo is an open source, for those who don't know, it's an open source application that is a record of the kind of scholarly work that might exist for a particular organization. And it's a linked data platform as well. And in their schema, they've def defined all of these requirements that you would have for this type of organization. Um, so uh, in this spreadsheet, you can imagine each of the individual columns as corresponding to one of those predicates that we've been talking about, and each one of the rows as corresponding to a new entity that is being administered for that, um, for the, that overreaching ROAR organization. So as you fill in the columns for a new row, then you are actually filling out this, um, uh, this entire graph to identify all of these relationships between those. And in the upper right-hand uh, corner of this spreadsheet, if you take a look at it, we've added a new button, a little ROAR button. And if you click on that, that will actually go through and take that spreadsheet and it will um, generate linked data, a JSON-LD file that presumably you could um, dump directly into Vivo um, as a starting point for your organizations, for example. Now, in this case, we've agreed to use the Vivo schema for all our definitions of the, re the types of research organizations and um, the predicates as well. Uh, they don't explicitly define a subject term. So in the example here, we use uh, an American classification of instructional programs. And we've actually, uh, the spreadsheet actually limits um, your selection choices to those by having additional sheets that sort of um, limit your selections to those components. So that's kind of a local way that you might maintain this. Um, and then Wikidata is another existing one, which is uh, more of a community 
uh, maintenance of the same type or similar information as well. And um, here we should drop another uh, URL so that you can get a Wikidata entry for a department at the University of California. And it's very similar to the previous one, um, except we're now using the Wikidata schema. So they have an existing methodology too to describe the relationships between research organizations. They describe the, the different types of organizations that might exist. And they also have a way of identifying the subject terms as well. Um, you have a different interface. So now that you're using the Wikidata interface, but you're doing the same thing where you're filling out these individual predicates. Um, uh, and then the bottom right-hand corner, you can't see on the slide, but I think we'll be dropping in the chat as well, um, is another tool that could actually use the Wikidata version of this but build a specialized tool for, in this case, that was um, only interested in following these particular research um, uh, organizations. So these different ways of approaching how we might solve this problem lead to a lot of um, different things that we need to consider about that. And I'm gonna let Arthur um, start to talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, I think we have our first poll question now as well, which um, was just, as we go through the rest of the thing, if you can kind of give an idea of, if you think that it makes more sense to locally maintain and administer something or more of a community organize, organization. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Quinn. So I'm wearing my daughter's uh, hard hat here for the infrastructure part of this talk. Um, <laughs> we, uh, so we've been talking about this for uh, for the last year and a bit. Um, and yeah, there we go. Um, these, these are some of the questions that, uh, as, uh, Quinn and, and Carolyn have mentioned, we haven't, you know, definitively decided on what direction we're going here. Um, so these are some of the considerations. If we were, <coughs> if we were to have a real, um, extension of ROAR as a, as its own PID, um, how would that be put together? And so, first of all, there's how, how would the extension be stored? Um, and related to that, where do the IDs come from? How is it curated? Um, and then once we have IDs, how do you resolve those IDs? How do you search for um, an extension uh, piece of information? And how do you, and, and what else might be needed? Uh, are there other pieces of metadata that we might need for this? So, um, are we waiting on the poll question? Ah, people are just doing the poll. Okay, good. Keep doing the poll while I talk. <laughs> so um, maybe the ideal situation, thank you, Quinn, is uh, for Roar to take on the uh, departmental um, subunits or whatever whatever kinds of subunits of organizations are needed. Um, and uh, of course, I think this comes up at almost every community meeting that uh, people would like to have departments and so on. Um, uh, I think the organizers of, of Roar have been reluctant to go in that direction just because it, you know, it, there's already close to 100,000 uh, records and this would be multiplying it uh, many times, presumably. Um, but it, um, you know, so, so suppose Roar did do it, how would that work? Um, we've got uh, illustrated in, in green here, the pros of that kind of approach and red or pink, the uh, Disadvantages. Um, so first of all, it would be you know if, if it was all under Roar, then then it would be consistent. Roar IDs would it would be the same kind of ID for the parent and all the children. Um, uh, you know all the metadata would be consistent, presumably. Um, you'd have you know the the <clears throat> the same uh, curation process uh, and so forth. It'd all be in a single database, a single API, and all that. Um, the complication is. Uh, you know, it, it would be a lot of maintenance for a central ROAR group. And so I think the, the only approach that would work would be to have um, some kind of authorization of, of, for example, particular institutions being able to update their own information. Um, but that adds a layer of, of authentication and, and authorization uh, to the on the ROAR side and having additional users of the system able to update things and that kind of thing. So next slide. So the, the next thing that we talked about quite a bit was, 
using GitHub. We've seen the last an image. Oh, there it is. OK. <laughs> um, so this is uh, the UCD library raw extend demo GitHub repository that we've been working with for the last uh, many months um, just to try to test things out. And this is an example file within that, which is a uh, one of those JSON LD files that um, Quinn was talking about. So it has the relationships for a certain um, uh, for a certain organization, and then each organization would have their own, uh, either their own directory within such a repository, or maybe their own GitHub separate GitHub repository. So uh, the IDs would come from whatever the org whatever the whoever was the person who first <coughs> creates a record for a particular uh, subunit. Hopefully, the uh, institution that that was responsible for it in some way. And then curation would be by that uh, by the owner of the the GitHub repo, whoever that was, whether it's that organization or a third party that was managing these. Um, so you know, this is. I mean, we 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 worked on this. We we kind of did it for um, uh, a dozen or so different organizations just to try things out, um, and it, it's feasible. Um, next slide. So this is this is kind of a team administration approach using GitHub. You have a set of trusted users who can. Uh, make changes directly in the repository, and then other users can submit pull requests um, <clears throat> to make changes. So there's a whole, you know, Git Git automatically gives you version control. You can you can roll things back easily if you need to. Uh, you can have many people editing. Many <clears throat> you can have many different repositories if you need to. Um, each organization can have multiple responsible people. So that's great. On the other hand, we still have sort of an issue of central administration, which GitHub repository is associated with which Roar ID. Uh, somehow that has to be recorded and and uh, maintained somehow. <clears throat> so that means there's some new authority there that uh, maybe Roar itself or maybe a third party is taking that on. And then Git itself is a bit complicated. It might be a bit more than the, um, <clears throat> what many <laughs> institutional users would want to try to tackle. Um, so next slide. So as um, Quinn talked about, another option that we've talked about, I guess, more recently is, is using Wikidata directly. This is, uh, this is Stanford University's record in um, Wikidata. And as you can see, <laughs> if you can uh, magnify the screen here a little, um, this is a list of, of subsidiary organizations that Stanford has uh, or somebody has added for Stanford within the Wikidata system. And so they have a pretty good uh, hierarchy already set up there. Um, so in this, in the Wikidata case, the ID would come from the QID, the Q and a number, which is the uh, identifier for the item in Wikidata. Anybody in the world can edit the metadata. Um, <clears throat> There isn't really an official curation process, but organizations can curate their own records through a watch list. If you just put all your own organizations on a watch list, then um, that would kind of work. Um, and <clears throat> one advantage with Wikidata is there's already a lot of existing properties and identifiers and so on that could be uh, all related. So you have a lot of additional metadata potentially. Uh, next slide. So this is. This is sort of the community administration approach um, to it. And so advantages here, we don't have to worry about um, all the administrative overhead. This thing already exists. Um, uh, there's a single database, single API, multiple editors. Again, um, <clears throat> disadvantages, we're relying on <laughs> the uh, Wikimedia system and all its its uh, work, which is great, but um, it's not something that we have any control over. Um, and the API uh, to use it mostly is, is using its uh, Sparkle query service, which is a bit complicated for people. Um, and then there's the issue of trust. People do vandalize items on Wikidata occasionally. Um, so it's something that would need to be Carefully thought about if that was the main approach, and you know, in, in addition, it's really not intended to be a primary data source. It's a sort of reference to all or all sorts of other data sources. So, but <clears throat> maybe it's the right thing to do in this case. Um, so I think we have another poll. If you want to put that up, the second poll, and one more slide here, I guess. So then there's the question of how how do we resolve these. Um, 
basically two choices. Either either we somehow persuade Roar to uh, support the extension. So that would require some technical implementation on the Roar end um, so that uh, the additional subunit ID was something that, that it was knew what to do with, for example, pointing to the GitHub uh, repository in that case or, or Wikidata in the other case. Um, or some kind of third-party service. So we've heard about ARK ARC <laughs> identifiers. There's other kinds like that. DOIs are also kind of built that way. Um, and um, yeah. <laughs> almost time for Carolyn. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> so we, as uh, Quinn mentioned earlier, this uh, demo resolution service extendroar.forge.org um, that actually looks at both both examples, the GitHub things that we set up with the UCD library, GitHub repository, and um, and the Wikidata choice, and you can kind of browse around that and see what it what things look like under that. It's um, yeah, it's a start. And so, Carolyn, I think it is time for you now. Okay, how do I? Pardon me while I manage windows and toggle buttons. Okay, I think I'm live. Um, so thank you all for voting. Uh, please keep voting because we're really looking for feedback in, in directions. Um, I wanted to thank some of our other team members. There we are. Uh, and apologies if I forgot anyone. Uh, we welcome anyone to join our little team. We have a Slack channel in the Roar Slack called Department Level. Um, and we meet every couple of months. It's it's not a huge time commitment, but but it is definitely, um, I think, a, a use case that people really want to see uh, and would like to find a way to implement it that isn't going to be a huge burden on anybody. Um, I think we have some questions in the ask a question. I don't. Uh, I I tried to answer one. Maybe uh, one of our other team members uh, can weigh in on on one of them or. Let me see what they are. Right. I can, I can help out. My audio is finally back. So we have. Um, Thank you. Uh, first question, provocative question. Is Roar ready for expansion? Does it need to learn to walk before running? Thinking about adoption, sustainability, community building. <laughs> um, I mean, I, so this is Liz from Roar and Data Site. Um, so we, we just had a Roar community meeting yesterday, and I think I can uh, say a few words about this one. I mean, the, the answer in some ways is yes, but the so the previous year in 2020 was really focused on starting to, to build some of the foundation. And as we expand into 2021, um, we're really digging into um, further into adoption and expanding the, the features and the services that uh, that were provided. So um, yes, but we are also already working on it. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, I mean, as Carolyn said, we're we're the, the different choices that we presented kind of have different burdens on Roar. Um, obviously, I think the wiki data probably would be the absolute least possible burden <laughs> and, and outside resolution. So because Roar wouldn't have to do anything. And we had we we had most votes for Roar to administer everything. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, maybe. Well, I'll just put my. I'll just say a little bit too about. Um, we talked a little bit in our uh, in our abstract about the way that um, arcs work, and are a little bit inspired by that. And so for the arcs. Um, there is kind of like in my, I kind of think of it as like a two-step resolution because you have the identifiers and then you have these subparts that are associated with that. And the ARCs don't know what to do about anything but the identifiers. And so the subparts are somewhat opaque to that community. So in my mind, it kind of makes sense that if you do come up with a strategy that does allow uh, kind of the same s situation that you have with ARCs, you can work to an area where um, if you get adopters of the of the organizational structure, the Roar organizational structure, 
And they could even allow these subparts to be included. Um, organi some groups could just not use it to say, okay, well, I, at least I understand where what the ROAR identifier is without maybe um, being able directly to uh, to decode what those individual subparts are. And then we talk, well, maybe Wikidata would be a good entry for us to, to build that resolution so you could discover the recipe on that. Yeah, I think that's an interesting uh, an interesting approach that's that's worth continuing to discuss because it allows to distribute some of that um, some of that work. Alrighty, next question: What is Roar providing that Grid does not? Yeah, can I? <laughs> so obviously, right now, uh, Roar is a clone of Grid, um, but um, the the next steps for Roar is is the self curation and, and handling that. And really, Roar is a is a community led organization, and the Grid has been, while they've been very good about um, managing their their data set, um, it is uh, a commercial enterprise, and they've had their um, you know run by digital science, and they've uh, they have their own priorities. So um, so the main difference is just that Roar would be. The, the priorities of Roar are, are those of the community, um, the research community. Yeah. Right. And it, it is a basis to expand on and add, yeah. add new things based on community needs. Uh, I will also add that uh, in comparison to Grid, not to be overlooked, especially by developers, Roar offers an open API rather than just a, a free open data download, which has some advantages depending on your, on your use case. And an open um, creation service too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, who makes wiki pages for an institution? Uh, well, that's one of the things that we talked about in in terms of the trust mechanism, because um, multiple organizations can make um, the wiki data for those, and so that's part of the the idea is that you lose some of that your administrative um, control for that. Now, it can be beneficial and it can be negative. Um, for example. Um, you'll have bots that will go through um, Wikidata and associate other organizational codes like ISNI or something um, to records, and they'll start to create those records. So you might actually begin with a stub already in Wikidata that you could use. You might find that you have the same department has been defined three or four times because people haven't been a, a careful enough to put those together. Um, so it, it does mean that if, you, if you're going to use this as sort of your canonical source, the institution is going to have to take some ownership of, of curation of those. And that will exist um, over the whole period. So rather than, you know, closing it so nobody else is allowed to edit it, what you would end up doing basically is monitoring those pages and so that you can see the types of changes that are made and see if they're breaking what you expect an institution to have. So Arthur showed an example of Stanford. Um, Stanford had a program uh, where they described in great detail um, for their librarians, how you, what's the standard process for identifying a department or a school within Stanford? Um, and then they went through and, and created all those and, and make sure that they all um, adopt that. Yeah, we're, we right now here at UC Davis are doing a similar thing. So we've adopted some of uh, Stanford's um, standards for that and are looking at a pilot project for how we might do that as well. All right, are there any other questions? Well, we're just in that one minute before we have to switch. I do wanna say Carolyn had her thank you slide, but I wanna especially thank Vesela Ensberg who um, Provided oh, the links yes. like that here, and she's she's the one who's kind of kept us actually talking to one another for the last. <laughs> year. Everything was, yeah. Thank you, Leslie. The glue that holds us together. <laughs> <laughs> right. I agree. Excellent. Thanks so much, Festival. Excellent.